the most on. Okay, I guess I'm recording. Um, I'm trying to do this thing where I'm like not planning it out too much, not trying to think about it, because otherwise I'll just sit here for like an hour being like, okay, I guess I gotta start now. <laughs> I guess I gotta g get started now. I guess I gotta. <laughs> so, um, yeah, here I am. I've started it and I look like a vampire. And um, let's get right into the beverage of today because beverage of the day. Because, um, I, it's hot slash cold and I'm trying to keep it that way. So that didn't make sense. Um, so I don't, I didn't know how I would do this. I didn't have any interesting drinks today. I always like forget about it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I need to do a podcast. And then I'm like, oh no, I don't have anything, but I do have an interesting snack. But anyways, I was like, chai sounds good, right? So I made some, um, I have some tea in an I Love My Bulldog mug. Um, we don't own a bulldog. We've never owned a bulldog. I think my mom bought it because my school mascot is a bulldog. My college? I'm not sure. But anyways, I have that. And I have a mug that I tried to stick in the freezer for a little bit with a bunch of ice in it. Um, sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to make this so you can actually see what I'm doing. But... Um, Despite the amazing setup that I have. <laughs> okay, anyways. So, what I was going to do is prepare myself a nice little chai drink. So, I'm going to pour some chai into a mug with ice. And I'm sure half the ice is going to melt. But that's okay because I planned it out. This is really strong tea. So, then it's going to dilute it. Um, and then I'm going to put some nut pods in it. And we'll talk about that in a second. Here we go. Hopefully you guys can hear this well. I want it to be like ASMR a little bit. A little bit of, a little bit of ASMR action. Oh, awesome. It doesn't fit. Okay, cool. So that's great. <laughs> uh, it's just... Okay. And I spilled. And I don't have napkins of any sort in this room. So that's fun. Um, it's okay. It was just a tiny little triplet. A little triplet. Okay. Pretty good. Okay. Just looks like iced tea. I guess that's what it is, but it looks like iced tea, iced tea, you know, like Nestle. Okay. So now we're going to put some nut pods in it. Is there like a word? I was trying to Google it, but I couldn't find anything. Is there a word for putting creamer in tea? Like how like a latte is as like steamed milk with tea. Is it just tea with creamer? That's it. Anyways, I'm going to use this nut pod. I originally heard of this from Emma Chamberlain's YouTube videos. If you've ever heard of her, I'm sure that many of you have. She like grew her channel like crazy fast and she's like a baby. Just kidding. She's like 16, I think. Um, anyways, Yeah, it's uh, almond and coconut cream, it's unsweetened, and she said it was good, so I was like, okay, well, I should check that out, because I like creamer, and um, sure enough, it was on thrivemarket.com. It's expensive, it's pricey, on Thrive it's a little more reasonable, but still, like, more than any of the other creamers on there, it seemed like, per ounce, um, so, yeah, but anyways, it is good, and I like that they sell it in these, like, small containers, so that, um, because, like, I'm, if I buy creamer for myself, like, I'm the only one in my house that's gonna drink it, so I don't want to buy, I hate buying, like, the big ones, because it just goes bad, or I have to, like, the, the, you know, I have to drink it very quickly, which I don't, would rather not do, um, but this is more like, I could finish this before it goes bad, because it's tiny. But, but it still does fit. This is 22 servings, which means like 10 servings, you know, if you're like me. And then I'm also going to put some sweet drops, stevia, sweet leaf, liquid stevia, street drops, sweetener, natural stevia clear. What even is this? Um, anyways, it's this liquid stevia. I prefer this over the powdered stevia for some reason. It just seems a lot better. Also, you can buy these in flavors, 
which seems to dilute the artificial taste of the stevia even more, which is nice. I'm just going to put a little bit more. I also feel like I'm a chemist or something because it's got like a little dropper. Um, but yeah, I also have a straw so I can stir it. Don't worry. If you're listening to this on audio, you're probably like, what's going on? But I'm stirring some creamer into some tea, okay? Iced tea, baby, yeah! Ooh, haha, <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> Maybe a little more ice than was necessary, but that's okay. Oh, I have more. I was just thinking it needs just a little bit more chai. Remember earlier I couldn't fit it all in there? There you go. It's all in there now. Well, I guess it's not because I already took some sips, so some of it's in my body, but anyways. So that's my chai drink um, in a Carnival Cruise mason jar from my, I think my parents' honeymoon. Not even sure. Anyways, um, yeah, it's uh, pretty exciting stuff. Um, anything else I need to talk about about the drink? Don't think so. Uh, well, I should say normally I would want I would like make a bunch of tea, put it in a mason jar, put it in the fridge, and keep it in there for like overnight or whatever, and then I would already have cold tea, so I don't have to worry about like the ice melting or anything like that. But I just like wanted this right now, and I had to have it for the podcast, so um, that's why I did it kind of a stupid way. But hey, it all works out in the end, doesn't it? So I'm going to try and do a different thing for this podcast and record my screen Um, because, I don't know, that seems like a cool thing to do Uh, because then I don't have to like edit in any pictures or anything. You guys can just see exactly what I see as I see it as I'm talking about it. I'm selecting the areas of the screen that I would like to record. Okay, so... Um, the last time I did one of these, I was supposed to do two in one week so that I would have one prepared for the week that I was going to be in Oregon. Didn't end up doing that. Surprise, surprise. Um, so now I have a bunch of leftover articles that I didn't talk about. Um, so they might be like a little old, like not old, old, but like a couple weeks ago. So a lot of you guys might've already heard this stuff, but I'm sure a lot of you guys also haven't because like... I mean, if you're like me and you don't always keep up with things, um, I'm sure this will be new to a lot of you guys. But, anyways, let's get it on. Let's go. Um, so, last time I started with people and I ended up talking, like, mostly about people. So, I'm going to start with ideas this time. I'm going to switch it up a little bit, okay? So, starting off, we're going to talk about Oh, this is interesting. I was just talking about this yesterday, two days ago. I was just talking about this two days ago. I love a working computer. Um, Okay, so cruelty-free cosmetics act passes in the California Senate. Pretty cool. Um, I gotta stop saying that. Um, So it says, yesterday the California Senate passed the California Cruelty Cosmetics Act in a 21 to 9 vote and in case you've never seen numbers before that's a lot of people for it which is pretty freaking dope if you know what i mean um so yeah it doesn't mean that like it's happening yet it's probably not going to be enacted for like a long time to where it's actually like affecting us directly but um just the fact that they're like talking about it and that like it's being supported by people in the government is pretty cool um 
And also, even though, like, a lot of you guys don't live in California, so you're probably like, when is this going to happen for me? Like, once California does something big like that, it's only a matter of time, matter of time before other states will follow suit. Just like with the legalizing marijuana thing, starting with Oregon, and, or was it Oregon or Colorado or something? I don't know who was first, but, you know, the first states, and then now California has legalized marijuana, da 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 But, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, also, and, um, I was just talking about this the other day when I was in the store with, um, two of my friends, and one of my friend, Kristen, uh, I said something about they're about to do this in California, and she was, like, saying, um, so that means, like, they're not going to sell any, any products that are tested on animals anymore, like, they're just going to stop selling those, and, like, I don't know, I was thinking about it, and it just seems so crazy that they would stop, stop selling, like, huge brands, like, the biggest brands in makeup and cosmetics, whatever, I don't really know what the exact definition of cosmetics is, but the biggest brands in the cosmetic industry test on animals, like, CoverGirl, Maybelline, whatever, you know, and even, like, hygiene products like Neutrogena and all that stuff, they all test on animals. So, it would be crazy if they just stopped selling those companies completely in California. That just seems, like, so unrealistic. But just them talking about this right now and, like, how this is actually, like, seeming like it's going to come into effect soon, I'm sure all those companies, Maybelline and CoverGirl and stuff, are, are already talking about, like, we need to, we probably should think about, like, going cruelty-free because otherwise we're going to lose a huge market, which is the state mm-hmm. of California. Um, definitely should not have my phone on the counter. Okay, so, um... Anyways, just thought the sort of sort of thought I'd start the ball rolling. It's really hot in here. I can feel my upper lip beginning to sweat. Um, there's a month-long vegan festival called V4 to launch in London, which like a month. That's crazy, but I don't. I don't really get, maybe I should read the article, you know, but I've, I kind of skimmed it and I don't really, I guess it's not like, it's not really month long. It's kind of just like things are going to be happening throughout the month kind of thing. Um, which like I wouldn't be complaining. I mean, I'm complaining because I can't go, but if I were in London, I wouldn't be complaining. Um, did it already happen? Oh no, it's August, so I'm so I'm not too late on that. It's it's the month of August, I guess, and it's called V4, as in like V4, like vegan for. I'm assuming for the environment, for the animals, and blah 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 blah. blah. Um. But yeah, it sounds so cool, and a lot of you guys are probably like me, like you keep hearing about all these like festivals, vegan festivals, vegetarian festivals all over the world, and none of them are ever in your town. And I feel you. I mean, I do live in California, so I have access to the ones in, like, LA and and Oregon more than other people, but I still haven't been to one because, like, it just, it, it never works out to that I'm available and, you know, I have the money to, money available to just, you know, pay for a train ticket or... I can't drive alone. The farthest I've driven is like 40 minutes away from my home. Um, well, maybe 50. Anyways, um, so yeah, I just thought I'd bring it up. And if anyone is planning on going to that, please let me know in the comments because I want to hear all about it. Sounds super cool. Um, I'd love to, like, because I, like, like most people, want to travel to different countries. And um, I think it'd be smart to, like, plan my travel to when there's a big like vegan festival going on in a different country so that like not only can I travel to the other country but also I can like experience like a fun like festival vegan festival too um but first I need to I need to figure out how to go to a southern california one first (coughs) (coughs) when 
you don't know how to drink liquid. Okay. Um, so, oh my god. So, Hawaii officially bans sunscreen damaging coral reef and marine life. That, I read that stupidly. Hawaii officially bans sunscreens damaging coral reef and marine life. There we go. Okay. So, um, they're the first state in America to do this. Not a surprise. Um, and it won't come into effect until January 2021, which is like, you know, seems like a long time away, but also it's a good amount of time for people to, like, adjust to the change, I guess. Um, and when I was first looking at this, I was thinking, like, are they gonna, like, check your bags when you're, like, flying to Hawaii that you're not bringing, um, damaging sunscreens or what? Because I would think, like, everyone who's going to Hawaii... It's probably bringing sunscreen in their bag and um it's probably probably like only you know a certain amount of people are bringing like natural non-toxic sunscreens most people are probably just bringing like whatever sunscreen is the cheapest and i was like are they gonna check people's bags like i don't it seemed kind of weird but i guess they're just banning the sale of them in the state um which that still obviously makes a difference um despite people bringing other sunscreens too but I don't know if they're gonna like do something to where like I don't know I just I thought that I thought that was interesting but yeah so um this the ingredients are oxybenzone or octonix octonoxate um those are the chemicals they help to block out UV, UV rays, um, and according to research from nonprofit, weird I can't pronounce, environmental laboratory, cause bleaching, deformities, and death to coral when they enter the water, be it via swimmers or through wastewater. So, definitely cool that they're taking action on that, but I'm just interested to see, like, how that will pan out. Um, however, there are many who are concerned about the new ban. Some believe it will have a negative impact on public health and cause skin cancer rates to rise, but dermatologist Dr. Henry Lim understands why the bill has been passed. He believes doctors should now increase their efforts in raising awareness of sun damage and cancer risks by staying in the shade, covering up, wearing protective sunglasses, and using the appropriate type of sunscreen on exposed skin, Hawaiian citizens and tourists can still avoid sun damage. Lim maintains. Oh, I got confused for a second. Um, yeah, so, oh, so kiss my face is fine. I'm assuming, like, most, um, natural sunscreens by, like, cruelty-free vegan brands are probably not going to have those ingredients in them because, you know, a lot of most, like, vegan-type brands um, are also, like, aim to be non-toxic. This one says... Mm, uses no chemical... Oh, just kidding, that's propellants. Um... It says eco-friendly, so I would assume that would mean, but, you know, you know what happens when you make an, oh, I mean, wait, you know what happens when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. Ha 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 ha. Okay, let's look at the ingredients. Let's check it out. Um, I love reading octal, that's not what it was. It looks similar, but it's not. Oh, I guess I'm looking at inactive ingredients. What is it active or inactive? I don't know. I don't see it in the inactive ingredients. Uh, no, those aren't. Octocrylene. That's not it. Okay, cool. So, a kiss my face is fine, and Alba Botanica is fine. I use Alba Botanica. I use should be in here somewhere. 
What a fun podcast, finding out what sunscreen Emily uses. Okay, apparently it's not in here, but a man in his underwear is. Um, whatever. It's a purple one. It's Alba Botanica. It smells amazing. It's lavender scented. I love the smell of sunscreen, and I love the smell of lavender, and it's lavender sunscreen, so it's just my dream. Um, but yeah, anyways, so use non-toxic sunscreens, guys, if you're going to go to the ocean. I mean, I guess it's not as important if you're just, like, swimming in a pool or just putting sunscreen on, not going in any water at all, but... I mean, it's better to just support the companies that don't use the non-toxic things anyways. (sighs) Okay, on to the next thing. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, Um, no, I'm going to skip that for now. I don't want to talk about PETA right now. I don't feel like it. Um, So... French, but it feels like so long ago that I found these articles, so I'm hoping none of you guys are like, wow, Emily, way to keep up on things. French butchers ask for protection against vegan attacks. Um, intriguing enough title. So, apparently there's this French, but there's a French butchery. <laughs> there's a butcher, butchery? Is that the word? A butcher place. Butcher shop in France. And, um, there's some vegans who have vandalized it, broken windows, and sprayed, like, fake blood on things. Um, and meat and fish sellers in France are angry at what they see as acts of terrorism. I don't necessarily like the word, uh, terrorism being used for this because... I don't know. I mean, I guess by definition it is, but it just seems kind of, I don't know. Like, it's different than, like, not, like, vegans getting mad at, like, um, meat sellers is different than, like, a white man getting mad at a man for being Muslim or something like that, you know? So that's why, like, I... Because, like, at least the vegans, like, I don't agree with what they're doing. Like, I think what they're doing is horrible and unnecessary. But, like, at least they have, like... Like, a reason to be mad. I don't know. I mean, I'm not on either one's side. More the more the butcher pe- butcher shop side than the vandalizers but um I just I don't know I think the terrorism word isn't maybe the best word there but um but anyways enough about that uh I it's so like I this annoys me so much because it just seems so like counterproductive like it's just these people's jobs like I don't it's so annoying to me And this is, like, another thing that I want to talk about if I ever do, like, a um, everything wrong with vegans type video. But, like, it's so annoying to me when vegan activists or whatever, they that's what they would call them. Okay, I don't want to shade anybody, but, like, when vegan activists, like, do, uh, like, are mean to workers in, like, a meat shop or in a restaurant that sells meat or anything like that, like, they're not the people to get mad at. It's just, like, when, like, you hear all these, like, retail stories of, like, a customer getting mad at, um, an employee for, like, um, something that the store is selling or whatever, and it's, like, it's, like, why would you take it out on them? Like, it's not, they're not the ones who are, like, making these decisions. They're just trying to do their job and, like, make a living. Like, it, not only is it just, like, rude and it doesn't look good on your part, but also, like, it doesn't do anything for whatever you're mad about. Like, it literally doesn't make a difference because they can't do anything. So, it's just annoying because, like, while I don't agree with, like, what their, what these people's jobs are, obviously, like, I'd rather them have other jobs, obviously, but, like, they're just jobs, like, these people 
aren't like huge like I don't know it, it's just such a waste of time like these if you're trying to like promote veganism this is not a way that's gonna do that like if anything it's gonna make people not want to be part of your movement or whatever because they see you as crazy or disrespectful or violent or whatever and it's like especially when like veganism the whole point of veganism is like non-violence towards animals and then you're like being violent towards um other people i don't know like it's just annoying anyways um enough talking about that let's talk about there's this article on yahoo lifestyle that was titled, What to Do When Your Kid Decides to Be a Vegan. It came up when I searched vegan on, like, Google News or whatever. Um, so I clicked on it. Just I was just curious to see what it was talking about and whether it was going to be, like, negative or positive or neutral towards um, veganism. But I actually, like, was really happy with the article. It seemed pretty, like positive while not being too positive like they talked about um supplementing and like b12 and all that but not in a way that's like like too critical i guess um it starts out talking about like this one lady where her 10 year old daughter um was saying like she doesn't believe it's okay anymore to use animal products um, and she's not going to be eating, wearing, or using anything made by anim- made from animals or produced by animals. Um, and the mom was basically like, okay, like, I want her to be able to, like, live her life and, like, make these decisions and stuff. And, like, I respect this. But, like, this is, like, a huge thing. And um, she said, to be honest, it's too inconvenient and expensive for me to make happen for her right now. And, like, I, f- I totally, like, understand that. I get kind of annoyed with, like... Um, I don't know, like, it can be hard when you want to do something and your parents, like, when, if you want to be vegan and your parents aren't letting you, like, I understand that that's hard and that's frustrating, but I don't know, like, I, I try to remind people when they give me those type of messages, when they send me those type of questions or messages, that, like, you have to understand that, like, it's it's gonna be harder for your parent no matter how easy you think that veganism is or can be it's harder for your parent because not necessarily because veganism is hard but because like then it's a whole new meal plan for one kid versus feeding all your kids the same thing and it says something like that in here it says It's certainly one thing to raise a vegan family with responsible adults planning out their meals appropriate for their needs, but we can see how it's difficult for a mother to fit in an entirely separate meal plan for one kid while the rest of the family is chowing down on meat and dairy. And that's a really good point. Like, it doesn't even have anything to do with, like, veganism being hard or veganism being easy, whatever. It's just, it's hard to give one one kid special treatment while the other kids are not getting that. Um... It's just complicated, but I think, like, the way to, I try to tell people, like, don't, like, make it as easy on your parents as you possibly can, like, if, if there's, if, do all that you can do, and then just ask for the least bit of, like, assistance from them, and hopefully you'll find some sort of balance, I don't know. But I think the best way is just, like, easing into it, like, not telling your parents, like, hey, I'm vegan now, like, I have to change everything, and, like, you know, I'm not eating what you cook anymore. But, like, slowly getting your parents used to you eating differently, and also maybe, like, over time, your the rest of your family will, like, maybe not go vegan, but, like, adopt certain things that you're eating, um... And, like, products that you buy or whatever. And then you find a balance. I don't know. Like, and it also depends on what age you are when you're going vegan. Like, when I went vegan, I was really young, but I was already in high school. 
So that's a little different than like, this is a 10 year old. That's like crazy. That's could be still in elementary school, like a fifth grader. That's insane. Like I would have definitely had a hard time with that if I tried to do that. But anyways, back to the article. It says like it literally one of the like um, paragraph starts out with saying a vegan diet is traditionally a healthier diet. Um, a quote from an MD pediatrician at Mercy Family Family Care Physicians in Baltimore. Um, a child would likely have lower risk of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and cancer. A vegan diet also exposes a child to an, to the natural remedies offered by many plant based foods. Um, but they also say at the same time, some vegans run the risk of missing out on essential nutrients, blah, blah, blah. Then they talk about protein, vitamin B12, calcium, vitamin D, amino acids, iron, and omega-3 fatty acids. Um, and they say what many of you guys have probably heard before, well-designed vegetarian diets that may include fortified foods, blah, 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 blah. They always say like well-planned or like well-designed And I feel like that is kind of, like, misleading because it makes it seem like you really have to be, like, a type A personality and, like, you have to be able to really plan out your diet. But in reality, it's just, like, you have to figure out what kind of routine foods and uh, meals work for you in the beginning when you're getting used to it. And then from then on, you get used to it and you start buying and eating a lot of the same things and then once it just becomes part of your routine it doesn't feel like you're really having to like think about it anymore because you just get used to it but I get why they say that because like you know I'm sure you guys have heard like whenever people go vegetarian or many of you guys have lived it people go vegetarian and they think that they're going to be healthier but then they just eat like grilled cheeses and like quesadillas and mac and cheese and all that it's like you can't you can't like put all vegetarian all vegan all non-vegan diets in a box and say like this one's healthy and this one's not it's like it has to be you know you have to you have to think about things and like figure out what works and what doesn't work for you But yeah, anyways, they talk about um, different things. They actually, I thought it was good that I've seen a lot of like articles or whatever or interviews with like a nutritionist or something where they say like, um, yes, veganism can be healthy, like, um, but it has to be like a well-designed diet or whatever, like you have to get certain nutrients or whatever, but they don't actually say like where specifically you can get those nutrients. So then I'm like, okay, that doesn't really do anything. But this article actually says like, Um, calcium and vitamin D are becoming easier to obtain because most dairy alternatives are fortified with them. Typical breakfast cereals like Cheerios are fortified with B12 and iron. Um, and then also says another favorite B source of B12 for vegans is nutritional yeast, blah, blah, blah. They talk about it, um, including it into your diet regularly and like essential amino acids, rice and beans is an example, or a peanut butter sandwich. Um, any combination of grain and legume. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I just thought it was interesting. And now let's go on to... Actually, let's see how far I am into this. 39 minutes. Seems like a good time to me to eat a snack. And take one more sip of this. Um, okay, so today the snack I have to show you or talk to you about, if you're listening to this on audio, um, these snacks called, uh, the brand Drizzlelicious. Pretty cool. Um, I bought these both at TJ Maxx. That was probably a horrible sound and I apologize. Um, Many of you, I don't know if any of those stores are, like, international. Probably not. They seem like a very American thing, but, like, um, at least where I live, we have all these stores by the names of um, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross. There's tons of them. 
um, all over, and they're basically just like, uh, what is it called? I don't know what they're, let me just use the computer that is right in front of me, TJ Maxx. I think TJ Maxx is like the head of all of them. Ooh, I can't spell. Um, but basically there's all these stores that sell, um, let's see, let's just stop talking. It's an American department store chain selling at prices generally lower than other major similar stores. It has more than 1,000 stores in the United States and Puerto Rico, making it one of the largest clothing retailers in the United States. And they... Okay, let's see... Where can I see what other stores they own? Okay, so awesome. It doesn't say. But as far as I can see, um, TJ Maxx, Ross, Marshalls, even like Home Goods, although that doesn't sell the same, it sells home stuff, obviously. Um, they all have like a lot of, they all have similar layouts and similar, like, they're just similar stores. And I'm guess I'm from what I can see, it seems like they're all like part of the same like company, like under TJ Maxx. Um, and they're mostly clothes. They have some home stuff and some like kitchen stuff, like type stuff like that. But um, mostly just clothes department stores. They resell stuff from other um, companies at cheaper values. But in the front of the store, sometimes at other parts of the store, but in the, like, checkout line, they always have all these different, like, snacks and candies and drinks and stuff like that. And it's interesting because, um, at, for the longest time, I never, like, paid attention to them. Um, and actually, at Home Goods, it's not in the, it's not just in the checkout line. There's, like, a whole, like, food area near the kitchen area. And it seems to be getting bigger every time I go there. But, um, but yeah, at the, at the clothing ones, which is Marshall's Ross and TJ Maxx, in the checkout area, there's all these snacks, and, um, just a few years ago, I was at one of those stores, and I realized that they actually have a lot of good, like, vegan-y snacks, like, vegan, cruelty-free, cruelty-free, gluten-free, I said cruelty-free with a G, because I was trying to say gluten-free, anyways, um, like, healthier snacks, natural snacks, organic, whatever, that's where I initially found the um, sriracha veggie straws was at a Home Goods. Home Goods even has like lots of um, vegan protein powders and like you can buy chia seeds and flax seeds there. So if you live in an area that doesn't have any health food stores, but you have a TJ Maxx or Marshalls, Ross or Home Goods, there's probably another one that's similar. Um, I'm sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe none of them are even like connected, but. It seems like they are. Um, definitely check those out and see if there's... I mean, maybe it's because I live in California that the California TJ Maxx's carry more, like, health foods. But um, I'd be interested to find out if yours are the same. Um, but anyways, they also have a lot of things that are, like, you wouldn't expect them to be vegan. So, like, we were there... Um, a couple weeks ago, and there were these, like, bags of cookies, um, like, snack cookies, and there was chocolate chip and snickerdoodle, and they didn't look like vegan cookies at all, like, they didn't say vegan really big anywhere, but then, um, I think I was just, like, looking, and I was like, I'm just gonna, like, I feel like I should check just in case if those are vegan, just in case, because, like, you never know. And then before I even grabbed it, Casey grabbed it and saw that they said vegan on them really small. And so we bought some and they were actually really good. They were gluten-free snickerdoodle cookies. Kind of wish I bought the, the chocolate chip ones too. But anyways, it's like interesting to go to like a clothing store and then you just find like vegan cookies in the checkout aisle. Um, but anyways, they have these drizzlicious snacks at TJ Maxx and nowhere on them do they say that they're vegan. They just say, 
They have a gluten-free and non-GMO symbol, but nowhere on them do they say that they're vegan. So, um, I was a little bit sketch, sketchy feeling suspicious because, um, because I was like, if they're vegan, like, why wouldn't they just say somewhere on them? They're already, like, proud of being gluten-free and non-GMO. You'd think, like, right by that, they'd put vegan or plant-based or something. But in the ingredients, there is, like, it says natural flavors. So I was like, maybe, like, the natural flavor isn't vegan. So I was kind of like, mm. But then I looked at, and maybe none of you guys care about this at all, but, um... I don't know, like, in case you're curious, too. I went on their website, and even then it says vegetarian. It doesn't say vegan. And so I was like, oh, did I buy something that wasn't vegan and posted it on my Clovis Vegan account on Instagram? Um, But then I went to their Instagram, and their Instagram bio says vegan in it. Like, because both their, they only have two flavors right now, and it's the ones that I have, and they're both vegan. Um, And I think they're kind of like a smaller company, like, starting out because, first of all, they only have two flavors and also um, they have less than 4,000 followers on Instagram. So, check them out. Follow them on Instagram. I'm following them. Hecka. Cool. Um, But, yeah, I initially heard of these from my friend Jackie. Um, She bought some for my friend Casey in her, like, Secret Santa box that we were giving each other all these different like snacks and goodies and stuff and we were all like like what those are vegan and like shook because they're hella good sorry but um yeah it just says crunchy drizzle bits wait crunchy drizzle bites with rice chia quinoa and flax um this one is cinnamon swirl and this one is s'mores They're, like, low-calorie, 90 calories per serving, and there's five and a half servings in a box, in a bag, whatever. But they're basically, like, these little, little, like, tiny rice cakes, basically. Oh, that one doesn't have a lot of icing on it. I want to show one that has a lot of icing. Mmm. Well, they're kind of messed up because I had them in the car, and so they kind of melted a little bit, but, um, basically they're like these tiny rice cakes. We love a working camera. Focus, 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 focus. No, not on my hand. On the rice cake, mother effer. Literally, whatever, you don't have to see it. It's a tiny rice cake with icing on it. And they're super good. (laughs) I mean, it's not a rice cake because it's got like chia, quinoa, and flax on it. But um, they're like tiny rice cakes, a little softer though than rice cakes. Um, like, puffier. And this one is, like, white chocolate drizzle. So, yeah, like, who would have thought I would have got rice... I mean, wait. (laughs) Little crisp things with white chocolate icing on them that was vegan. In a TJ Maxx. But anyways, um, these are my new favorite thing. I love them so much. I've talked about them for quite a long time now. I apologize. But also, I don't apologize. You know what I mean? I think I like the s'mores ones better than the cinnamon swirl ones, just because I love s'mores. But, um, they have a chocolate drizzle on them. I'm not even going to bother focusing, because fuck you, camera. But, um... Somehow, they taste like s'mores. I don't know how. I guess maybe it's the natural flavors. But, like, there's no marshmallow in it. There's no graham cracker in it. But they taste like s'mores. I don't know how they do it. I guess it's, like, some of this... I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. 
somehow they do it. They're magicians over there at Drizzleicious. Oh, f <laughs> oh, fuck yeah! Um, comment below what vine you think that's from and what he says that in reaction to. Um, so I was wondering like where else you might be able to buy these from because I've never seen them anywhere else besides TJ Maxx. But they're the best things in the world. Um, so apparently they're in. Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> there was a huge Northeast 7 Eleven promotion currently going on, um, but that was during June. May and June. So it's over now. But maybe they still sell them at 7 Elevens. But um, available in stores across New York, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Virginia, Ohio. Wow. I'm impressed with myself. I actually knew those state um, abbreviations. Um, but yeah, if you guys see these anywhere, let me know because I'm trying to find them. I'm trying to, I'm trying to know where I can buy these all the time. Because literally when I was at TJ Maxx, I bought there was only one left after I bought these. They don't sell very many of them. Um, but also, it's kind of upsetting because, like, it's not really something you can buy online because they would be, like, a mess when you they get to you in the summer. Um, at least if you live somewhere like I do where it's hot AF. But also, they're coming out with a new flavor. They just posted this yesterday. Um, and they haven't said yet it's going to be a giveaway. So if you can guess what the flavor is, it ends Thursday. Um, someone said birthday cake, and I freaking hope so, because that would be amazing. Ow. <laughs> this person is just commenting birthday cake like 50 times. Apple cinnamon. Okay, anyways, enough about the drizzleicious stuff. But um, yeah, definitely go to your nearest um, TJ Maxx. Marshalls, Ross, Home Goods. Let me know what you find because I'd be interested. I always forget about it, and then I'm like, I should go to those stores more often just to just for snacks. Even um, Burlington. Wait, is it Burlington? I think Burlington also. It's like all those like weird department stores, the cheaper ones, like not like Kohl's or whatever, but the department stores that are like known for being cheap. They all have like hella food and snacks and stuff and sell like chia seeds and all this stuff and I'm like why like of all the places that would start selling like health foods also Steinmart is it Steinmart some other store too but anyways enough about that um let's look at places because I want to um gotta close some tabs we get in a little wild. We get in a little wild. How much, how far am I? I'm at 53 minutes now. So, um, yeah. So, um, so if you want to be really jealous of somebody else, um, and be sad that your pl your town that you live in doesn't have enough vegan stuff. Um, check out the Vegan Garden that just opened in June in Budapest. Something that I can't pronounce. Garden. Um, a permanent summer home for plant-based focused street food trucks. The garden is the first of its kind in Hungary's capital. Tourism website We Love Budapest reports that food options in the garden include dairy-free ice cream, heart-shaped pizza, Mexican chili non carne, seitan kebabs, chickpea burgers, brownies, and more. And, yeah. Why can't we have something like this in Fresno? We need this. We need stuff. We need to be cool. Come on. <sighs> Anyways, um... Ew. There's a food truck in Texas called Lick It Up. <laughs> Why? Anyways, um, so yeah, just look at it. My computer's not loading, but I'll link stuff below and you guys can oh I guess I can just click this. <laughs> I think oh I didn't follow their account. I'm going to though. 
Because, like, what... 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 I'm jealous. So cool. Can you just imagine... Can you just imagine a vegan, like a whole area where there's like vegan food and vegan shops and vegan restaurants all in one place? I'd make hella friends. I'd maybe even get recognized. <laughs> what? That looks so fun. Dude. Someday I gotta go. Anyways, that's enough of that making myself sad. Look at that. What? So pretty. Okay, anyways, um, Mex McDonald's announces new initiative to swap out single use press plastic straws in June. Um, that's pretty cool. Wish they would work on anything else about their store, also, but, um, we appreciate small steps in this house, don't we, guys? We do. We do. I answered for you. We do. <laughs> uh... And now that I'm looking at this, I noticed that they mention they, they did a little throwback to um, Final Straw, which I think I talked about in the first um vegan propaganda podcast it's the straw reusable straw that you can buy that comes in a little container and i have low battery on my camera Fuck. um one second see that's the biggest reason why i need to work on like making my podcasts like more closer to an hour is because my freaking camera always runs out of battery but also i'm only at 58 minutes so Oh, I don't know what to do. If anyone has a recommendation for me for what I can do so that my camera doesn't run out of battery, I don't know. Is there something? Can I buy like a different battery for my Canon camera that will last longer? Or like, I don't know. Anyways, um, so it's gone down in price since then. That's pretty cool. Was thirty dollars. Now it's twenty dollars. But unfortunately, you can still only pre-order it. I was hoping to click on this and then find out that it's ready now, but apparently not. But anyways, it's a reusable straw that folds into a. It collapses into a sexy case. Can they stop? Like that's just a little bit cringy. But um, anyways, it collapses into a small case that functions as a keychain. So it's easy to take around with you. It also comes with a cleaning squeegee. And, um, five final straw ambassador cards. I remember hearing about that, but I don't remember what that was. But I think it's, like, um, something you can leave at places so that it lets companies know, like, to start using, um, to stop giving straws. Or, like, only give straws by request or something like that um yeah anyways it's really cool i'll have to um maybe i'll set them on notifications on instagram for me or something so that once they're officially out i'll know right away and then i can let all you guys know um because i seriously really want them to be super successful they have twenty one thousand followers on instagram so that's already like really good for them and and now they have one more but, um, ooh, expected delivery November. That's a long time. And that's only expected delivery. Well, I love what they're doing. Um, I wish it would come out sooner, but I appreciate it nonetheless, and I will put them on note a few cash ones how do i okay maybe i can only do that on my phone but um yeah definitely gonna let you guys know when that happens because um i'm gonna be really excited i should just pre-order it right now can't believe i haven't already done that but anyways super cool and moving on um dallas tattoo parlor koneko studio wants to kickstart a vegan movement in the industry so I think I just put this in here because I wanted to p 
point out to you guys in case you guys weren't aware that a lot of the time tattooing isn't vegan friendly. Um, I guess sometimes the ink isn't vegan uh, or it's tested on animals. And in addition to the products that they like also use to like prep your skin or clean your skin or whatever. Um, but there is alternatives to all of that. Um, and yeah, those are out there, but there's places in like LA and in other towns or whatever where, um, they do exclusively vegan tattooing, vegan friendly tattooing, cruelty free and whatnot. But also that I've heard, there's videos on YouTube. I think, um, Monami Frost made one. I think it was her. I'm assuming it was her because she's like the most tattooed vegan YouTuber I've ever, ever seen, obviously. But um, I think it was her that did a video where she was talking about how to do, how to get tattoos vegan style at like a place that's not vegan friendly inherently. Like you can, like she was talking about like, um, bring she brings her own. It's going to be weird if it's not her that did this video, but she like brings her own like product something she brings something that she bought like online or whatever um and talks to the tattooer or whatever tattoo artist about like um can you only use like this type of product and like do you guys have any of this da, 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 da. i don't know it was really interesting i'll try and find that and then link that below but um i found it interesting because it's something that i've never thought about i've always wanted to have like tattoos um and i never really thought about like um, how I would go about it being vegan and cruelty-free or whatever. So, yeah, just thought it was interesting, something to think about. And lots about Starbucks this time, this week, this month. Um, first of all, Starbucks permanently has come out with two newer non-dairy drinks, um, like, naturally non-dairy, not, like, you can get any drink non-dairy at Starbucks by just asking for certain milk or none of this or whatever. But um, they recently came out with this vanilla bean coconut milk latte as well as the hazelnut mocha macchiato, um, which I believe is also vegan without ordering any. Let's just check myself before I wreck myself. <laughs> hazelnut mocha coconut milk macchiato that's a mouthful um so checking these ingredients in case you guys didn't know you can go on starbucks website for any drink that they sell i think sometimes limited edition type drinks are not on there but they have the ingredients for every drink and you can look at them very easy to see they also have nutritional facts um and you can switch the milk to see like how the ingredients change if you get certain different kinds of milks or also the different sizes that they have. But anyways, this looks like it's vegan friendly. Um, yeah, because I just ordered this, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think I asked for any. No. I don't think... <laughs> my dog. I don't think I asked for any alterations. I just did this. I just got it. I just got the drink. Um, and that was really good. However, with the, like, lattes and macchiatos, I don't really understand why it's, like, separated like that. Like, it's like, oh, here's the cream and here's the coffee or whatever, or here's the milk and here's the coffee. And it's like, you have to stir it yourself. Like, why don't they just stir it? I guess it's for, like, being, like, aesthetic or whatever. But, um, I don't know. I immediately stir it anyways. And with the new strawless lids, that's what I was going to talk about. The other day, uh, on the way home from Oregon, I got the vanilla bean coconut milk latte, which I'm going to talk about. And, um, I got the strawless lid. I just asked if they had it and they gave it to me. And, um, I didn't think about it at f but when I was ordering it, but... You can't really stir it because you don't have a straw. I could have brought my own reusable straw, but I forgot to bring that on me with, with me on the trip, which was upsetting. Um, 
but yeah if you have your own straw you can stir it no problem but um I didn't so I just awkwardly kind of like spun it <laughs> to try and stir it which doesn't work as well as having a straw does but um anyways something to think about I guess but also I posted about getting this vanilla bean coconut milk latte which I thought was vegan um without any alterations and that's what I've seen online and all that but then I did have actually okay let's talk let's talk this might just be the last thing that I talk about on this podcast because we're already over an hour and um this is gonna be a second but um anyways so on the way to Oregon we went we stopped at Starbucks right and I asked about I said do you guys have the new vanilla bean coconut milk drink or whatever it is I couldn't remember specifically what the name was and she was like oh yeah vanilla bean coconut milk latte whatever um and I was like and then she started to like type it in or whatever and I was like that's non-dairy right because I like had a moment of like that one's the vegan one right and she was like she was like um no that one has dairy in it and I was like I was like, is the coconut milk one, right? Because I didn't want her to think that I was talking about the vanilla bean frap. And she was like, yeah, the coconut milk latte, the vanilla bean is not vegan. And I was like, "Mm, what? And um, I was very confused because I've definitely ordered vanilla bean drinks before. I've definitely seen them like on vegan websites being listed as vegan um, as long as you get non-dairy milk. And so I was confusion. And then I was like, uh, I was like, are you sure? And she was like, yeah, my little brother, she was telling me like her little brother doesn't, he's lactose intolerant or whatever, or he's allergic to milk or something. And so she checks everything for him. And that one's not, not vegan or, uh, not non-dairy. And I was like, "Uh, okay. Like, I didn't want to like go about it, go on, on about it longer and I also didn't want to like try and like correct her in front of her because I wanted to try the hazelnut one also so I was like okay well whatever I'll get the hazelnut blah 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 macchiato drink and so I got that but then on the way but then in the car I checked it on the website on the Starbucks website and it said I looked at the ingredients and it looked like it was vegan to me so I was like okay well whatever I'll get that the next time And so then on the way home from Oregon, I got the vanilla bean one and I posted a picture of it on Instagram. And then someone DM'd me, um, who works at Starbucks, who said that, that, who said the vanilla bean isn't vegan. And I was like, "Mm, what? And then I was like, are you sure? Like what, like what in it isn't vegan or whatever. And then she was telling me that in the natural flavors, there's milk powder or something like that. And, um, she showed, she sent me a picture of the ingredients and when you go through all this work trying to explain things, when you can just access them on your phone instead. Um, so, haha, let me find this message. I don't know where this message is. By the way, all my DMs are about toilet paper now, so that's pretty fun. Um, If you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. Shit. Not having an easy time finding this message. Oh, found it. Okay. So, um, she sent me a picture of the stuff and it says ingredients, sugar, natural flavor, vanilla bean pieces. Um, and that's it. So I was like, what? And, and she said that in like a previous, the old packaging made it more clear, but just to be safe, I don't drink it. And so, um, I was saying, and I should have done this before I did this podcast, but I was saying that I want to email Starbucks and ask them, see what they say, because it could be, like, she said the old packaging, so I was like, well, maybe, like, I wonder if they, like, changed the formula since then, or they're buying it from a different supplier or something, because, I don't know, I thought it was, I, I'm, if anyone knows, let me know, but if natural flavors in an ingredients list, if the natural flavors include milk, any sort of dairy product, 
would it say in the contains section, in the allergen section, contains milk? Or would it, would it be required to say natural flavors, parentheses, dairy, or parentheses contains milk, or something like that? Are they required to do that? Or are they allowed to not say if it's below a certain, like, um, amount or whatever? If anyone knows more about that, let me know. But um, sometime soon, I definitely want to contact Starbucks by email or whatever and see what they say about that. Um, Because, I don't know, getting mixed mixed information from different people and um, I'd like to know because I did really like the vanilla bean drink. So I would like to get it again if it is fully vegan friendly. Um, Yeah, also Starbucks ditching straws by 2020 is pretty cool. They're going to be using these strawless lids or you can... um, request straws still but they're going to be like compostable straws or whatever i did see a um article about this about how like they were saying that's a good thing but also like certain people with disabilities they need straws and i was like didn't they say they were going to use like compostable straws if you need them or whatever and they were like but those straws may not be able to like um, they're not as durable as, like, plastic straws, and so I found that pretty interesting, like, that's not something that I think about regularly, so I was glad to hear, like, a different perspective, um, because it's true, like, I've had, like, paper straws before or whatever, and they definitely don't hold up as well as plastic straws, so if you need a straw to be able to drink properly, um, then, a paper straw might not actually work that well. But I've also had like straws made from like cornstarch or whatever where they feel the same as like a plastic straw. So I'm hoping that Starbucks will maybe also have those at hand. I don't know. But seriously, I've had like cornstarch straws that I thought were plastic straws until someone said that they were cornstarch because they're that similar. So I don't know. Something to think about. But also i always forget that you can bring your own drink to starbucks you can bring your own tumbler or whatever or i think you can also just bring like a bottle like a hydro flask or whatever and they can fill those up um but you know it's hard sometimes it's hard to remember that especially like if you're on the road for like a road trip or something you don't always just have like an empty and clean tumbler on hand to use um but yeah, that's something to think about also. And yeah, they're also, they introduced these vegan protein cold brews. Um, have not had those yet, but um, let's see. Booby doop, boop, boop, boop. I've been hearing a lot about Starbucks being pro-vegan lately coming out with new vegan stuff i'm sure you guys oh i'm sure you guys heard about it i talked about it in my last podcast but um in the uk i think somewhere that's not america um starbucks's are selling a bunch of different vegan like food options they have like a vegan cake raspberry chocolate cake or something there's like a couple wraps and then something else um and In American Starbucks, they sell these, like, white cheddar Cheetos things that are vegan by the brand Hip Peas, um, and they're coming out with these, uh, seems like every once in a while they come out with a new drink that's, like, permanently non-dairy milk, um, instead of just every drink comes with milk automatically and then you have to ask for coconut milk or whatever, they're coming out with drinks like the coconut milk latte, the coconut milk macchiato or whatever that are naturally already non-dairy. So, but they're also saying this article says more Starbucks vegan options are coming. CEO Kevin Johnson says the global coffee chain will be leaning into creating more plant-based beverage options as consumers continue to seek out vegan food and drinks. So, um, they have these plant-based cold brew protein drinks this summer along with lower sugar and lower calorie drink items blah 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 but yeah so um 
I guess that's it and I'm not going to do questions this time because I just had a lot to talk about and um, catch up on but I'll try to, to squeeze in questions next time and um but also I wanted to give a shout out like I didn't do in the last one um, I'm trying to shout out smaller channels Channels that are smaller than me so I can use my platform that I have, I guess. Um, I barely have a platform on this channel, though, because I only have, like, a thousand-something subscribers um, compared to my other channel. Uh, but, hey. I, hey. Um, anyways, uh, I wanted to shout out people with smaller channels um, that I appreciate or... Um, I don't know, just because, you know, people that are given a different style to the vegan stuff, um, I'm kind of sick of, like, so many vegan channels being, like, the same thing with a different face to it, um, and so, yeah, um, I'm gonna shout out my friend Chase, who, um, I have been subscribed to him for a long time, like, a long, long time ago, I don't know how many, um, Wow, I'm not good at typing and talking at the same time. Um, a long, long time ago, he messaged me and sent me his um, ebook so that I could have it for free. And that was really nice. That's like the first time anyone ever, um, anyone ever like sent me something for free, um, something that they made or whatever. Not that that happens a lot, but like that was the first time someone offered to send me something. And I was like, what? Like, that's so cool. That's a nice thanks. Um, but anyways, definitely check him out. He's really funny and um, like goofy. And he's got a lot of videos and a lot of like easy recipes and stuff. And yeah, I just want to, I wanted to give a little shout out. Um, if you live in Sonoma, he goes to some college in Sonoma, so maybe you'll see something familiar. I'm sure, like, at least one of you guys do, right? Sonoma State, there you go. But, um, yeah, he'll be linked in the description, so please check him out, watch at least one of his videos, give him a nice comment, say I sent you, um, and yeah, thanks for watching, uh, or listening. I guess sometimes you guys are just listening. Um, pray for me, sometime I'll get sponsorships on this thing. That'd be fun. I'm pretty close to monetization. If I just get, um, 1,500 more watch hours, I get to monetize. That's pretty dope. Um, so yeah, anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for being here for me. And I hope you found something interesting today out of this. And, um, goodbye.